If you've ever wondered what the end result would be if R2-D2 hooked up with a vintage vacuum cleaner inside of the Chrysler building, uh, it would be this, the Smith's Model 2518 AC Arc Welder. Now, I picked this thing up down in Bullhead City, Arizona for 75 bucks, and the question on everybody's brain is, will it TIG? Well, we're going to find that out as soon as I get this thing fixed, so let's get on it. Now I really couldn't tell you a whole lot about this welding machine other than the fact that it was manufactured by Smith Welding Company out of Minneapolis, Minnesota and the original retail price on it was $260. Now judging by the very heavy Art Deco influence and the materials uh, from the period of time, I would guess that it's somewhere made in like 1940s, maybe 50s, maybe earlier, maybe less, but I'm going to say it's about 70 years old. Now this clamp is definitely not uh, correct, but the lug appears to be, which it's a little bit worn out. The amperage lug seems to work okay, but there were definitely bare wire on that lead. And uh, taking a look at this stinger here, that's pretty worn out, but uh, we definitely can't use it because that lug is broken. Now that needs to be replaced. Now I'm told that this works, but taking a look at this power cord here, you're out of your friggin' mind if you think I'm going to plug that into a wall. It looks like it'll electrocute anybody who even looks anywhere near it. So that has to come off and get replaced, and the uh, end of that one is going to be underneath this lid. So let's take the lid off of here and have a look-see at this rusty, dusty looking cloth covered mess of, uh, whoa, uh, exposed wiring. You know, every now and again, I'd like to say that trusting my gut is a good thing because this could have been really bad. Not to mention this dust is probably flammable. That yeah, could have been really bad, but we need to get all this off of here. This is layers and layers of I don't even know how long it's been since this thing was cleaned out, and I definitely don't want to be breathing it in, so let's start with a less messy option than an air tool, because uh, I don't want to breathe all this stuff in. Uh, just a little wire brush. I need to identify which colors are which, because all of this copper is, uh, well, whatever's left of the copper is now all weathered out and corroded. Looks like the white wires on top, our ground is way off on the side, our black would be down below. A quick picture in my phone will help me remember that. Just in case I forget and then I can remove all of these now it's really unique to find out that these are all brass terminals that's actually really friggin cool you don't usually see that uh, nowadays if you did it would be like six billion dollars to do it but I definitely took my time getting these out of here not trying to rush or anything because they're you know might be uh, corroded or messed up or stuck on there and they're likely to break so that's gonna make it more expensive another cool thing is this piece of rubber is the only thing keeping the cord from getting ripped out of the back of it but in no time flat, it comes right out. I went down to the hardware store, grabbed myself some 6.3 wire, put new terminals on the end of it. I chose 6.3 because that's exactly what came out of it. Maybe a little overkill, but I want to keep this thing kind of uh, correct, if you will. After quickly throwing the stop back on there, I'm going to get the terminals hooked up to the exact same spot that they were in before, but I'm going to go nice and easy on reinstalling these because, again, I don't want to snap them, break them, anything like that. you got to be careful with them. I did take some extra slack out of that line, and I'll give it a tug here just to make sure it's not going to move, and we're good to go to fire it up. So I'm going to grab a hold of my trusty 220-volt power cord, reach over, and give it a flick. All right, I'll admit, I'm a little standoffish. Wasn't quite sure, but no sparks are flying. It's not on fire. I can barely hear the thing. It doesn't like buzz or anything, which is kind of strange, but let's move on. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the lug on the stinger side was pretty much missing. It was, uh, it was actually soldered onto there, and I believe that was the original lug that came with it. But as a temporary solution for right now, I found another lug that will... Uh, fit over into it and will actually function and serve well So I'm just going to clip the end off of that stick this one on here And this should do for now just to see if the thing works now the way that this actually works You have your ground clamp that goes into one side this middle pin selects your amperage that's displayed on the front of the machine So right now it's set to about 90 amps then the stinger goes on the other side now If you need to change your amperage all you do is pull the center lug out of it put it in a new spot And there's your new amperage, but for right now. Let's see how it does on 90 now this machine specifically runs on AC, which means our rods are a little bit limited. Everything we use has to be an AC capable rod, or one that is used on AC, and the only thing that I have laying around that can be used on AC is 6011. But I must warn you, I am not the greatest 6011 welder guy ever. I really fancy myself on 7018, which cannot be used on this machine, unless we find a way to convert it over to DC. But either way, got it started, got it fired up, we get in behind the arc, this is actually really smooth. I mean it behaves like a 6 series rod. 
odd, very violent, cuts its way in, no problems. I actually can't lie, I was kind of taken back, a little nostalgia factor as I was going through here. You know, here's a 70-year-old machine, and this is the way that they used to do it way back in the day, and all the rest of that good stuff. I'm, I kind of like it. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, I'm definitely experienced on some of the older machines, like the Lincoln Buzz Box Tombstone, the rocket ship, which looks like another anatomical part that I won't say on this channel, but, uh, you know, I'm surprised. This one's very, very quiet, and uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. I actually, I really appreciate that, not hearing all day long, but taking a look at my 6011 game, I need some improvement, maybe a little practice. I'm not as good as TIG, but speaking of TIG... Here is everything you need in order to turn your arc welder into a TIG welder, starting with the argon. We use 100% argon as our shielding gas, nothing more, nothing less. Once upon a time we used helium and mixes, but all you need is 100% argon. You'll also need a flow meter, a hose, a torch, and a power lug. Now this power lug is also sometimes known as a power adapter or uh, an arc to TIG adapter or whatever. There's there's a link for this in the description and you can easily find it. It costs eight bucks. And that's literally at bare minimum what you needed to use in order to turn your arc welder into a TIG welder. Very, very simple. The full assembly is pretty straightforward. The line from the TIG torch connects to one side of the power lug. The hose connects to the other side of the power lug. And in order to supply power to all of it, we connect our stinger to the power lug. Now it's set up and ready for scratch start TIG welding. So let's give it a flick and see what it does. Oh, flame out. Flame. Oh, wait. Oh, flame out. Oh, get a light. Get a light. Oh, flame out. Oh, wait. Ah. You know what, this is pretty much what it's like. I'm not going to say it's impossible because I did get it to sustain for just a moment, and that was with a ridiculously tight torch height, and I'm not even kidding. But it kept on wanting to flame out regularly. We got about 20 CFH flowing, about 150 amps on the lug. Uh, we're, we're really pushing it. And look behind the camera here, this is just a unique coincidence that the uh, frequency of the welder is in tune with my frame rate of my camera. That's why you can kind of not see the arc and then for a portion you do but look at what it does with the metal this is not a usable puddle aside from the fact that it keeps on flaming out look what it's doing to that puddle that is just destroying it it's just kind of throwing it all over the place because it, it can't stay lit it's it's oscillating back and forth so much to the point where we just we can't sustain this and at, at any rate it's just it's uh it's pretty much not usable but you know just for the sake of fun here let's try to throw some filler rod in here this has dropped down to about 90 amps, and it, it's just chewing it away so fast that there's no way to actually control this arc. And this is the end result. I mean, it's just, it's disgustingly dirty. So at the end of the day, if you ask me, can the machine AC TIG? The answer is no. Ha, ah, but Justin, that's so unfair. Why would you say that this doesn't work on AC TIG? Well, I'll tell you exactly why. The reason has to do with the actual sign or the wave or the signal that we get from the welding machine, which just happens to be the exact same as what comes out of the wall. That means it's a 60 hertz wave, here in the States at least, it's a 60 hertz wave at 50-50 balance, and it's a sine wave. That means that the uh, amperage basically gradually starts from, it starts from zero, and it gradually goes up into the positive side, then gradually ramps back down, hits zero, then goes down into the negative side, slowly ramps back, hits zero again before it recycles 60 times every single second. That means that zero point where it starts and in the middle where it transitions from positive to negative goes uh, basically through zero. That means no amperage. That's gradual ramp up and gradual ramp down is enough to extinguish that arc or to flame it out, basically saying that we have nothing to sustain it or keep it alive. That happens 120 times every single second. That's a lot of zero. So basically speaking, without the high frequency start box that we normally use on AC that will basically keep a high voltage signal present while it ramps up and down, without that, we have no way to sustain that arc or keep it alive. Not to mention I had to go back and several times and adjust my amperage by pulling the plug out of one and sticking it into the other every time this thing got hotter and hotter and it was still there was no sustaining it there was no keeping it alive there was no nothing it was extremely impractical that's why we can't use AC TIG with just a regular old AC welder that doesn't have a high frequency start box or a high frequency box now this is not to be confused with the actual frequency of the AC wave that on this is stuck at 60 hertz. That doesn't mean we have to turn it up or anything like that. It basically just means that we need an extra component to keep a high voltage uh, spark uh, going across that, that arc gap every single time that the low uh, voltage and high current uh, amp, uh, 
arc is going. We need something to actually keep that alive, and that's what a high-frequency box does. So that's why the answer is no, this will not TIG. Even though it did light it and make a big old smearing, disgusting, boogery mess out of my puddle, or out of my plate on quarter-inch aluminum, uh, the answer is no, it doesn't work. Sorry. Now, I absolutely love this machine. I mean, this is 300 pounds of pure copper awesomeness in an Art Deco fashion. I mean, this is just dope, right? If you put this up to like all the old Millers and Lincolns and those old buzz boxes and all the rest of this stuff, I think this just blows it away with style points and quality and all the rest of that stuff. I mean, this is just cool. But nevertheless, I'm gonna, I've got plans to restore this thing. I want to see it in its original style of glory or whatever the case is and I have most of the parts for it. A few of them I'm gonna have to make and I really want to go like period correct on this thing. So uh, this this will be kind of this will be kind of fun. So definitely be on the lookout for that. You're gonna want to be subscribed and ring the bell for future notifications so you don't miss anything on this little uh, thing. Anyway, that is gonna wrap it up for this episode and I want to thank you guys for watching as always. Make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell for future notifications and more. If you need to get in contact with us, hit us up on the FabricationSeries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator or Facebook.com slash the Fabricator Series. I want to thank you guys for watching as always. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Maybe I'll bring old Smithy with me on the next episode too. I don't know. Put him in the corner. Stick him in the lobby. Man, this thing's cool.